Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, live the life we love. Uh, don't forget to loaf and leave. All right, it's Friday. It's usually do my PowerPoint presentations, and uh, that's what I'm doing today. And this one is called the Elephant Trainer. Yes. Don't make friends with an elephant trainer unless you have enough room in your house for an elephant. Once you begin this process, there's going to be a kind of expansion. You have to let go of other stuff that self-sabotages you, or you have to say you have to take on some stuff that's going to cause a little bit more roominess or spaciousness in your life. Here's an old quote from Osho, Rajneesh, if you remember him, a really spiritual person who lives his life as an art create a deep harmony between the body and the consciousness. And this is the greatest art there is. Her life will be a joy to see, and she will be fragrant for the sheer reason that there is no split in her being. This very unity makes her organic, and the wound of division is healed. Consciousness itself is the wound, hmm? like Adam and Eve. Once they were aware, they knew. So it forces you to pay attention. Hopefully you don't numb yourself in order not to feel. Then your denial of everything becomes the cause of stuff in your life. And when you practice, and I'm always saying have a practice, yoga is the one I choose, but I say any art form is a practice. The idea is to develop your craft or expect your skills to go to another level, which is why usually you have a teacher, somebody who can take your natural talent and guide you. Now, I always say that Kriya Yoga as defined in the Yoga Sutras as Tapas Swadhyaya and Isvari Parandan is their way of just saying that there's action, there's study, and there's surrender, what I call the university, the gym, and the temple. Right? Learn all about this stuff, put it into place by doing it, and then, of course, let go of the results. Offer it as a devotional sacrifice to your form of deity or higher consciousness. Now, if you've ever done intensive work in anything, we know that if you hit the body hard enough, the head will die. And it's, okay, so maybe the hookah was hitting the consciousness so you could let go of your ego. But the idea is an intense practice will like manually override a lot of the previous conditionings. So stick with it and get intense. Now, there's four lines of development we often talk about uh, when I do my quadrated order. And the line of what I call the king and queen, the inner ruler, the line of nurturance. They have the inclusive vision of the good of the whole uh, for them. Then you have the aggressive, the line of aggression, the part of you that goes towards a goal. And like a warrior, you're really disciplined, you strategize, and you get it done. But it's also about drawing good boundaries for yourself. Keep the negative influences out. And learn how to uh, utilize the fact that you can concentrate and organize yourself to the greatest advantage. Then there's a line of affiliation, which is called cognition. There's a part of you that has the ability to really see clearly if it's not distracted and if it focuses and it can go beyond, to a certain extent, your own personal or theoretical bias and see objectively what's going on. And that's what I call the magician or the inner uh, wise person. And they tell the king or the queen what their vision is and the king and queen decides to uphold it and then the warrior energy embodies it and acts it out on the material plane, boots on the ground. And then, of course, there's always the lover energy, what I call the affiliation energy, how you're connected with your heart to people who bring you joy, peace, and, of course, compassion for those parts of ourselves that are suffering. Now, you have to also realize that there's shadow aspects when you roll the dice in these quadrated orders. And how do you know? Well, the king and queen command, but if you're bossy, you know you're in the shadow of that ruler. Now, you know that the warrior is supposed to protect and serve, but if you use your energy and force or threat of force of violence, then you're mean. Now, the magician energy, the wise men or wise women, they have insider information, but they can also be detached and from behind the scenes kind of manipulate things. Then, you know, you're in the shadow of a cognitive line. And then, of course, if you're addicted in any way with your sexuality, your promiscuity is what comes through and not the fidelity and love that, uh, I don't say it has to be limited to one person, but when you act it out, usually it's a sign of uh, trying to overcome some kind of impotence or inability to connect intimately with other people. All right. But as we all face these things, as John Bradshaw has once described it, we have 
four lines of work that we can do that definitely correspond to the four quadrated organs I talked about. The first thing is if you want to change yourself, behavior modification. Literally, chew gum, run around the block, do something different than the thing that you're doing. Break the, uh, the train of, or the habit of doing it again and again. Then you got to do the original pain work. That means you got to go into the emotion and you can find out what triggers you and how you can best move forward by dealing with uh, things that maybe you didn't have the skill set when it first came up. And then cognitive creative, cognitive corrective, see it differently. Reframe the whole thing. Find a way to create a dialogue or a monologue in your head where you see how it served you in some way and see if there's not certain blessings behind the curses, certain silver linings behind the dark cloud. Not in everyone, but many more than you might imagine. And then last and most important, get an inner life. Find a way to make the spirit world as real and tangible as the flesh and blood world. And then uh, you'll have the archetypal and mythic perspective to, to help you uh, wherever you are in time and space. And then most important is to realize that when things come up and life is messy, trouble is only opportunity in work clothes. It's a great idea. See it as a, like the think tank can only work when there's a problem. So you have to see how those challenges and obstacles lead towards your growth. And remember, nourish yourself. In one of the Gospels, he says, I am the vine and ye the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Right? You have to be plugged into the source, your root. And then as Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. And whoever drinks of this water that I will give them will never thirst. But the water that I give, or, excuse me, but whoever drinks of water that I will give them shall never thirst. For the water I give shall become in them a well of water springing to eternal life. And as he says, I have meat ye know not of. He's not talking about something physical, is he? So once you get that, find out what nourishes you, connects you to the living spirit. And then most of all, understand your life is your path. Your life is also like your koan, which you can't figure out. But it's solely for the purpose of expressing your spirit. So here on Black Friday, I hope you all find your way to express your spirit. And we'll see you next Wednesday for the next Good Vibrations class, Yoga and the Yoga Sutras. Go to GabrielHalpern.com, sign up, tell your friends about it, let me know how you think I'm doing, ask me for a CD if you want. And we just had a new space open up for our Mexico, vac Mexico vacation, February 24th to March 2nd down in Via Shanti. So uh, anybody interested, let me know, we can still get you in.